Hi, I'm Dennis Chung from Jones Engineering Company Limited in Hong Kong. We're a ComApps distributor for China. Today, I'm going to share with you my experience for ComApps synchronizing while engine speed is unstable. First of all, uh, just to show you, ComApp has a online training on the website which you can look at this address. Under Genset Synchronization Principles, you will find uh, this uh, training in English also, I believe in Spanish and Italian. So please do go to ComApp's official website for the complete training on how to set up completely the synchronization. ComApp also has a YouTube channel uh, combat control systems that you can search and subscribe in YouTube. If you want to look for my company, you can look for my company in LinkedIn under Jones Engineering Company Limited or my website jones.com.xk. If you want to make comments, you can make comments in YouTube and also can leave me a message in LinkedIn. So, um, I was testing to 500 kVA rental gensets under island parallel situation, meaning there's no mains, only the set and the two sets are parallel together, there's no mains connected, using ComApp's IGN TC BB controller with an Intellivision 5 color display. So you can see these orange gensets working outside the factory. And the customer was wondering why the gensets were so difficult to uh, synchronize. They were having trouble getting a synchronization um, every time. Now, you can see when we look at uh, one of the gensets, the genset uh, in the rental fleet, this is G508 of the gen rental fleet. And you can see when I play the video, um, how the speed and the load is uh, fluctuating, mostly because this, the load is fluctuating, thereby the speed is going up and down. So let's play the video. Uh, you can look at the RPM and also the uh, engine kilowatts. The rest is Chinese, but uh, uh, of course, if you just look at the RPM and the kilowatt, this should explain it. So you can hear the engine was hunting. Uh, I was looking at it at just at this few seconds. It was going from uh, 1477 to uh, 1538 RPM back and forth. The load, of course, was going from 98 kilowatts to 170 kilowatts. Uh, we can't change the load. This is how the factory uses the load. The load fluctuates, it fluctuates a lot, uh, thereby the speed would uh, follow. So, the original settings that came when they tested the, the genset at the factory, um, the interesting points to look at are the voltage window, that's at 8%, which is okay. The, the dwell time, so this is the time. First of the voltage window is the, the window, thereby the two gensets have the same voltage. So 8% difference between the, the genset voltage. Dwell time is the time when the two sets are in the voltage and the phase window. How long will it have to be inside the window before it sends a breaker closure uh, signal? Um, so the dwell time is 0.4 seconds, which is which is quite fast. That's okay. What I didn't like to see is the phase window of uh, three degrees. What this means is the two sine waves of the two gensets they have to um, overlap within three degrees for 0 0.4 seconds before we will send a, a synchronous a signal so thereby we will ask the breakers to close. Of course, three degrees 
when the engine speed is going up and down like that, that is not going to happen very often that we can hold 3 degrees at 0.4 seconds. When they tested the engine in the factory, they tested on, of course, on a water brake or a dummy load, which is resistive. So everything is stable. The load was not fluctuating. And at 3 degrees, uh, the breakers were closed very peacefully and nicely. That's why they set it up like that at the factory. But when you run it on the site, <laughs> things are not always so uh, ideal. If you take a look at the default come up settings on the left hand side, you can see the default come up settings. If you look at it, the voltage window by default is 10 degrees and the dwell time is 0.3 seconds. And then the, but the face angle, the face window that we set from come up that we, from factory set at 10 degrees, which is quite a bit wider than uh, three degrees. But anyway, the, the settings on the, the gen set on site was at three degrees. So while I was on site, I didn't look at the default come up settings. So I went on to change the settings, uh, namely eight degree, eight percent voltage window. Yeah. From my experience is fine. Eight degree, eight percent, ten percent is not a, not a big difference. The phase window, I change it to 9 degrees. I, for myself, I typically like to set it 8 degrees, but 8 degrees, 9 degrees, 10 degrees is not a huge difference. You need some angle for this to work. And I wanted the dwell time to be shorter because <laughs> the engine was going up and down in speed. So I didn't, didn't want it to hold uh, for too long. So I shortened it to 0.2 seconds, as you can see in my settings. So these are my settings. Now, we can see after I change the settings, uh, G508 is online. You saw how it was hunting up and down. Uh, so I take a video of G507. That where I push the button, it is a closed GCB. And you can see from the video uh, how this works. Uh, you can see uh, when the the button I press, after I press it, you see it blinking. That is when it's trying to look for the synchronous point. You will see come up does try to push the G507 towards 12 o'clock, the synchronous point. When it reaches within nine degrees, 4.2 seconds, it sends a closed breaker button. You hear you hear that click. That is the the breaker uh, closing. You can hear that. And then immediately afterwards, uh, the gen says start to load share. And you can see that I showed you that the load sharing is um, quite even between the two sets. So to make the test complete, of course, I need to test the other way around. So I uh, took G508 uh, off the bus. So only G507 is running now with the same settings. Uh, 9 degrees, uh, uh, 0.2 seconds, I uh, tried to close 507 to uh, 508. So we look at video here. So you can see that works quite well. The both synchronous time was about eight to 10 seconds, roughly you can time it, which is not bad. Uh, I mean, the, the engine is fluctuating a lot. Uh, it, uh, it's not very stable, so it, it does work very well.
So, conclusion. Um, when you need to synchronize with unstable speed, of course, uh, Calm App would help you and it would perform very well. Uh, probably by the default settings from Calm App, it works well already. You probably didn't even need to make much difference. Uh, if, the, if the engine was more stable, I can tune it so it's more peaceful when it synchronizes a bit narrower angle, longer dwell time. But if the engine is fluctuating so much, I think the default settings, it should work. Um, probably don't even need to touch it that much. Of course, very important thing, make sure you have a very fast breaker. Uh, if you want to synchronize gensets, don't use a cheap, slow breaker that takes that's those days are gone. <laughs> we have very fast air circuit breakers today. Take a fast breaker. When we give the command to close, it will close immediately. Then everything would work. So again, uh, the Calm App uh, website online training, the, the address is here. The YouTube channel, Calm App Control System is here. Uh, my LinkedIn, you can add me. Uh, you can make comments here. If there are other uh, uh, things about uh, Calm App uh, that you maybe you didn't find in Calm App's training, uh, you can leave a comment. Either I will do some training to try to explain it, or I'll ask Calm App to do some training to help everyone. So uh, I hope you like this video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.